Hey everybody, if you're if you're hanging out watching this, uh, chill out for a minute and we'll be ready momentarily. That's perfect for you. Brought to you by MGM Grand, the entertainment.
Hey there, everybody. Uh, I can see that there are a handful of viewers. Um, we're just waiting for some of the people that are on the live broadcast to, or that, that are planning on joining us live to show up. Uh, we're going to keep this fairly casual, so if you have questions, uh, feel free to post them there in the comments um, or uh, let us know. Uh, tweet me. Any of those things is fine. All right, we got a bunch of people showing up. We're going to get started in just one second. All right, we see some comments coming in. Let's see what people have to say. Okay, um, so hey everybody, this is Corey Huff with The Abundant Artist, and I'm excited to do this with you. This is uh, the first time that we've done a Google Hangout for the entire Abundant Artist mailing list, so it looks like people are starting to trickle in, um, which is pretty fun. I can see uh, we've got a few dozen people watching already. Um, I imagine that's going to get bigger here in, in just a bit. Um, as we move along, I imagine that we'll have some people uh, showing up to hang out with us live. So uh, if you sent in your email uh, and said that you wanted to hang out live uh, and join me uh, in, the, in the live broadcast here, uh, I did send, uh, send you an email and invite you. Um, I can see we've got a couple dozen people watching live now. So why don't we go ahead and, and jump right into what we were going to talk about today, which is selling your art before you've actually finished creating your art. Um, and I, I threw that idea out there uh, last week, sort of sort of on a whim on Thursday or Friday, because uh, I had had a conversation earlier in the week with an artist, and, and she was a little concerned because she had this great idea for a series, but she didn't know how she was going to make any money between now and finishing the series, which was probably going to take her a few weeks. And I know a lot of artists are in similar position. 
So uh, we, we were talking, there were a few other people there, and, and I said, well, why, why can't you sell it before you finish it? And, and her mind just kind of went, what? <laughs> like, uh, and she had no idea how to handle that. Hey there, who's that? Sherilyn. You still figuring out the... Is the hi, how you doing? I'm great. How are you? Good. I was just talking a little bit about um, the idea of being able to, to sell your art before you've actually created it or before you've finished it. Um, I've seen Yes. Yeah. So I was, uh, I was just telling everybody that's, that's watching that, um, you know, I had this conversation last week and, and the artist that I was talking to had no, I, no concept that you could actually do something like that. And I realized, gosh, this is kind of a, it's a no brainer for a lot of artists, but for maybe for some, they haven't, hadn't even thought of it yet. Right. Um, and so, and, and then I, I put the idea out there and said, you know, let's, let's talk about this on Tuesday. And, uh, and then people started emailing me and, and being like, yeah, I do that all the time. Um, and, you know, and it's, and it's anything, it can be as simple as, you know, maybe you have a small group of collectors and you communicate with them regularly and you say, hey, here's my idea for this new piece of art that I'm going to create. What do you guys think? And, and people express interest in it. And so you sort of keep them up to date, uh, as you go along uh, with pictures and, you know, maybe a little note about it. Um, there can be anything from that to something a lot more elaborate. It, and, and Sherilyn, do you have any experience with something like that? I've done one commission mm -hmm. and it was for somebody who said to me, I want these dimensions. Mm -hmm. I know your work. Go for it. She didn't say anything. It was mm -hmm. extraordinary. That's and awesome. It was, yeah, it was really awesome. <laughs> she, she trusted my work and knew my vision would give her back what yeah. she wanted. Yeah, if you could tilt your camera down just a bit, we'd be able to... There you go. Perfect. Now we can see your whole face. Okay. Awesome. Um, so, Sherilyn, uh, where are you at? Where are you, where, what part of the country are you in? I'm in your neighborhood. I'm in Oregon City. Oregon City, that's like uh, 45 minutes from downtown Portland, right? It's no, 25. 25. 25, oh, okay. I don't drive. I don't own a car. So um, my, my sense of time for everything is skewed. Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah, I'm in the burbs. Excellent, excellent. So, so tell me, uh, you know, how, did you, how did you develop this level of trust with this particular collector? Oh, we did a lot of spiritual work together. Mm-hmm. And she'd watched my painting mm -hmm. uh, over several years mm -hmm. go through different phases. Mm -hmm. I was a watercolorist. I was a devotee of water and paper. Mm -hmm. And then I switched to acrylics. Mm -hmm. And I'd avoided using plastic for so, so long. And she watched this transition and watched the symbology change. And then... She was a point, at a point, she wanted an altar mat mm -hmm. made, mm -hmm. and she wanted a circle painting, and she said, put your symbols on there, or the cosmic, she didn't say anything. Mm -hmm. I just made a circle painting, and she, she just trusted, after all the, she, she and I had done a lot of spiritual work together, so just, she trusted the symbols would suit her. Awesome. Yeah. Um, somebody, so somebody in the comment section here, by the way, there's like three dozen people watching right now and, and okay. there's more trickling in every minute. Um, uh, so somebody asked, uh, Marquis Todd asked, hi Marquis, uh, asked how is this different from accepting a commission? So that's a great question. Like the, the overall idea of selling work before it's finished, how is that different from accepting a commission? So there's a couple different definitions of commissions, right? Like there's there's uh, you're getting commissioned by a city to do something, and you go through the, the whole the whole round of, of processes and 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 drafts and all of that and all of that stuff. Um, that's not quite what I'm talking about. What what I'm talking about is creating art that feeds your soul, creating stuff that you really enjoy doing, and uh, and then letting the people the sort of the world out there know what you're doing and having people be enthusiastic enough about your vision to support you uh, and, and, you know, give you money or promise to give you money uh, as the process is happening. And, and 
Yeah. I saw your email about documenting the process. Mm -hmm. um, I did that with the circle painting. Mm -hmm. And I showed the canvas, and then I showed certain aspects of it coming together because it was so unusual. But I love what you're saying to share the process so that you're not altering how you work, what you do, but mm -hmm. you're gaining this support, this massive uh, train behind you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, it, and it sort of goes to the heart of, you know, why do we make art, right? Like, so many, so many artists that I know um, really get afraid of the marketing process because they think that they have to be like, they think they have to be good at sales, right? And um, you don't actually need to be a great salesperson to make a living as an artist. Uh, if you can make a connection with people and, and simply explain where you're going with your art and, and get in front of the right people, um, and then, and then you know, this is where the sales part comes in, just not being afraid to ask for money, not being afraid to ask for what is, is worth your time. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Tarana, Tarana, is that, are you there? So we, we had somebody else join the call live, Tarana Cliff, and uh, I can't see her video. I'm having a hard time hearing you, uh, hearing your audio, Tarana, so you might want to exit and try coming back in. So anyway, so we were talking, like, th this whole idea of, you know, putting, putting your work out there and having people support it and be encouraged by it. I hope, I hope that answers your question, Marquis. Um, so Melanie in the comments says, a lot of fine artist painters um, show stages or demos online, um, just photos of those. And, and yeah, that's, that's exactly it. So there's, there's, that's just the next logical extension of doing that, right? Um, you know, back before there was the internet, artists would invite collectors in to the studio to see pieces that were in process. And the That's internet has, yeah, yeah it's, so just, neat. it's just the, it's just the next, the next extension of it. It's, uh, you know, Facebook and blogging and email and all that stuff is simply just uh, taking the world at large uh, and, and inviting them in to see your work in progress. And, and, I've, I can't believe how many emails I've received from various uh, artists saying, you know, I, I don't want to show my work before it's ready, and that's fine. That's totally fine. You don't have to. Um, we're just talking about one particular way of getting the word out about your art, mm -hmm. right? And so I, Cheryl, Cheryl, Sherilyn, Sherilyn, Sherilyn. Um, you know, it, how long have you been? How long have you been an artist? <laughs> My whole life. <laughs> Your whole life. You, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, I, I'd love to hear from you. You know, do you have stories about? Uh, do you have other stories about connecting with, with collectors and people who are interested in your art? I don't. Mm -hmm. No. I don't. And how are you? How are you developing relationships with collectors? Uh, you? This was my first summer of going to art fairs. Mm -hmm. I've avoided them. I was afraid of them. Too much work, etc. Mm -hmm. And this year I thought I've recently moved. It's time to make those connections. The big thing was talking to people. And a fellow artist said they expect to see you next year and then they'll buy. They want to know, they want to know that you're around. Mm -hmm. I was horrified. I didn't sell at these fairs. Okay. Yet yeah, the yet the people were so awesome. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that was that was worth the price to chat with people. But I'm I've painted my whole life, mm -hmm. and I've changed my genres, but I've I have not been visible. Okay. Okay. Now now I am. Excellent. Good. Good for you. And it sounds like it sounds like it's something that is. Uh, maybe making you happy or, or at least bringing you some connection with people. It's both. Yeah. Both. Um, so something that I wanted to share with people today, uh, I mean, you guys all know that I have all these courses and, um, and that I talk a lot about selling art 
Um, I want to dive into sort of what that looks like a little bit more about the, the process of how do you go from creating art to letting people in on your process to turning that into a sale, right? And obviously that's not something we can cover in an hour session or even a two-hour session. We can sort of scratch the surface. But um, I'm going to share my screen here, and uh, I just want to talk through some of the ideas in uh, the content marketing course. Now, normally this is a it's a paid course that I charge people for, and uh, and 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 but I'm gonna I'm gonna walk through uh, the beginning part of it because I want to show people the idea of what I'm talking about. Hey, Shannon, how you doing? Hey, Corey. Hey, I can only see your eyes. You, oh, I'll stop. <laughs> <laughs> That's better. Awesome. How's it going? Good. How are you doing? This is good. Cool. Yeah. Um, just a reminder, there's there's uh, several dozen people watching, so uh, you know even though it's just the three of us here right now, this is being broadcast on theabundantartist.com slash hangouts, and um, is also being recorded and broadcast to YouTube. So uh, you know after this goes out, it'll be seen by a few thousand people probably. No big deal. Uh, this is just a casual conversation among us and a few thousand of our friends. <laughs> That's his friends. Yep, yep. Um, so Shannon, I don't know if you've been watching the whole time, but we're talking a little bit about the idea of how do you connect with people and sell your art before it's made, right? Yeah. Um, and so I'm going to turn my screen sharing on, and I'm going to um, I'm going to share with you guys a little behind the scenes from one of the courses that I do called Content Marketing for Artists. And, and content marketing for artists and is basically what, it, what that means is taking your art and turning it into marketing content. And before anybody goes, oh, that just sounds awful, um, I want to show you a little bit about what that means. So um, I'm going to skip over some of this stuff because I want to get right into the heart of it. So if we go back and look at the history of content marketing, it's really taking what you do and putting it in an interesting context, <laughs> right? Um, so if you go back to the early 1900s, you see companies like Jell-O, you know, they want to sell more Jell-O, but people need to know how to make Jell-O or what to do with it. So Jell-O created a cookbook, right? And they have a dessert cookbook. And mm -hmm. that dessert cookbook is what made Jell-O a big thing because people would pass this book around and all the recipes had Jell-O in it. And so people would try out these recipes and share them with their friends. Um, same kind of idea with G.I. Joe. Uh, people would, uh, G.I. Joe put out this comic book and so they started creating a story around these toys that they had. You know, before the comic book, G.I. Joe was just these little, uh, you know, these little plastic figurines, right? But by creating a story a comic book and then eventually a cartoon, G.I. Joe created an emotional bond with each of the little plastic figurines that they would sell, right? Um, Nike's done the same thing. So Nike wants to sell, sell you shoes and running apparel, um, so they need to help you mo get motivated to get fit. So they, the, the Nike uh, Plus Fitness app um, that goes with your iPod or with your, your iPhone um, was a way of helping you track your fitness, and over time, that tells a story of uh, who you are and, and how you exercise and, how, and, and the story of your weight loss, right? Um, so Nike, then, Nike and Apple then become deeply connected to your health and your mental and physical well-being. So all these, these ways of uh, creating interesting stories, the Will It Blend videos, have you, ever, have, have you guys ever seen the Will It Blend videos? No. No, maybe maybe we'll take a look at one of those. Did you know that in Google Hangouts you can uh, share, you can watch YouTube videos right inside the uh, right inside the Hangout? Hmm. Yeah. So I'm gonna add a uh, I'm gonna add a video here. This will be fun. Here we go, YouTube. And then I'm going to go search for this YouTube video.
these videos are crazy. So these guys take a. Uh, oh, let's go ahead and share my screen again. All right. Can you guys hear that video? How do I? I can. How do I get that big on my? Yeah, oh, you don't want to go into technical things, right? I've got you really small on my screen. How do you get me? How many? How do you get me large on the screen? Um, oh, there you are. Click, I got yeah, you. I found it. Video. Yep. 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 I got it. Okay. okay good. I'm sorry. Cool. So I just want to make sure you can hear the audio from this video. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So this is pretty fun. That is so so these guys make blenders, right? My uh, my mom's husband uh, used to work for these guys, and they just make blenders, which is like a boring product to sell because all you do is you know it's just a machine that chops stuff up. But these guys figured mm -hmm. out a way to make blenders really interesting. Yesterday, mm -hmm. my granddaughter beat me. How did this happen? It's got to be my cue, Excalibur. I'm going to take care of this. I think I pressed the corner pocket button. <laughs> so I'm not going to watch the whole thing, but silly stuff like that. Um, this video alone has had several million views, or and not this one, 350, mm -hmm. only 353,000 views um, mm -hmm. on that video. The thing that's amazing to me is that you can get people to watch, millions of people to watch videos about blenders, right? So the thing that yeah. I wonder is how do you get people to watch millions of videos about art? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so what I started thinking about was, okay, let's let's go ahead and and figure out ways to get people to watch that uh, to watch videos about art. Oops. Here we go. So I'm going back to this little course preview. And this guy named Mark McGinnis, who's one of my favorite bloggers, um, he blogs over at Lateral Action. He said, what people are looking for online is original and remarkable media content. The less your content looks like advertising, the more effective it will be at advertising. Mm. Um, and so I, I pondered about that quote for a long time, thinking, well, what does that mean for artists? You know? And then uh, I ran into Gwen Seymour. And Gwen does a great job of doing videos about her art. And I'll just share this with you guys. <laughs> I have never shaved my legs. I think I wanted to once when I was maybe 11 or 12, and my mother informed me that I was too young to shave my legs. By the time she felt like it was more appropriate, I had grown out of the idea that I wanted to shave my legs and had decided already that I would never. Um, I don't shave my legs for three reasons. For one thing, my leg hair is light. If it were darker, I think I would probably be tempted to shave it. Uh, for another... What the crap is going on here? Why is Gwen talking about shaving her legs while she's standing in front of her art? <laughs> and, <laughs> and so I, I'm watching Gwen, and, and, and I know her. Um, I, she lives here in Portland. And, um, and, and I'm like, Gwen, why are you talking about shaving your legs? And, and she's so smart about this because... You know, this is a, a topic that's actually, f it's funny, right? And it's interesting, and it makes you want to watch a little bit more, right? And, and so what she's actually done is something that's really smart. She's got, she's captured your attention, and she's standing in front of her art. And then, listen, yeah. she turns this topic f around from talking about her art, or from talking about her legs, to talking about her art. Watch how she does this a really good way of identifying morons, and morons I mean by that uh, people who make certain life choices and then believe that everyone else should make the same life choices. 
In this case, it's a good way of identifying morons who do not embrace their own body hair and believe that anyone who does embrace their body hair is somehow wrong. <laughs> How useful the new <laughs> Finally, uh, not shaving my legs is my own way of resisting the beauty industry and its arbitrary standards for beauty. Uh, it's my own way of resisting the massive onslaught of advertising that the beauty industry uses to push its very wasteful and detrimental to our bodies and to the earth. There are products that are so, that are the chemicals that are so. Um, it is my way of resisting all of that. I don't think that everyone should have to. I wish more people would, uh, and that's part of the reason why I'm talking about it. Uh, but it is my personal choice and um, what I like to do. Um, in my research about the natural world for crime against nature, I came upon an animal who doesn't um, sometimes choose to shave their legs and sometimes not, but an animal who has varying standards of what you might call beauty. Um, it is elk. Among elk, the Males often have antlers and use these antlers in uh, mating displays and mating competitions. Um, but some males do not have antlers. And these males are very successful at reproducing. They are often healthier, less battered than the males that have antlers. And so are, as I said, very successful at reproducing. And I love that. I love that they don't fall into the standard that we think of, of elk beauty, and yet they do very well. I'm going to show you the making of this deed. And you notice here, she's not even talking. She's just showing you the different layers and the different colors and, and the different stages of creating this piece, right? Yeah. So the whole video is about a couple minutes long, almost three minutes long. And Gwen very savvily went from you know, show, went from talking about uh, shaving her legs to the wider issue of why women should or shouldn't shave their legs to talking about her painting, right? And, and her whole series, the Crime Against Nature painting series, is all about gender expectations. And, um, you know, this individual video maybe only had a few thousand views. Um, but she's done a whole series of these videos to go along with her art, and all together, um, the, the accumulated views of her art and her videos is quite substantial, mm. and Gwen has made a living from her art for over 10 years. Nice. Um, so she's sort of got this thing down, and, it, and this goes, you know, going back to the topic at hand of how do you sell your art before you've finished it, um, it's letting people in to the process and understanding what you're thinking about and what the art represents, one of the things that we have to remember as artists is that art can sometimes be intimidating to, to the average person, right? Even, even so-called professional collectors or people who have a lot of money, they aren't necessarily educated in art the way that we are. And so letting them into the process and understanding what your thinking is around it uh, gives people an in and, and an emotional connection to you and your art. And so Gwen's videos are one way of doing that. She also turned it into um, a website, and she has a book uh, that you can you can buy the PDF or you can buy a physical copy of the book. And and so basically, she's giving people multiple different mediums and multiple different ways of accessing her art. And then uh, that has led to some huge opportunities for her. She's been featured on uh, a variety of different science uh, blogs and magazines, and she's been invited to to speak at different uh, conferences about science and art. Um, so it's been a great opportunity for her. And, it's, and, and you can see that you know, these videos didn't cost her tons of money to produce. It's just her standing in front of a camera. Yeah. Right. So what, what do you, any thoughts about that? What do you think? Yeah, well, I, I've done a couple of videos, but I, mm -hmm. I think that she made it really interesting and fun. And, you know, and it leads into it. It's just totally cool that it's, she's totally Portland, you know, mm -hmm. with the whole um, sort of environment, environmental advocacy and all that. It, that's, mm -hmm. It's really great. Yeah. Um, it makes yeah. me know what I've done. Yeah. And let's see, I've been looking at a couple of the comments from, uh, from the, the people that are watching uh, online. 
Um, so Sean says, it would be interesting to see what would happen if you set up an auction. Every time you updated the progress, you could take bids. Oh, yeah, that's a good idea. Um, so, so the idea of, uh, you know, as you're showing people, people the process, as you go along, you, you set up an auction to go with it so that people can increase the bid. And you could do that right along with eBay. You know, you could use an existing infrastructure like that or set it up on your own. Um, set it up on your own. <laughs> Uh, Marquis says, posts where I've shown my process always get lots of hits. Sometimes I think that only artists really appreciate it, though. I was planning to put more on Facebook to pique interest around what I'm working on. be interesting to see what happens. I agree. Um, I'm, looking, I, I'm working with Marquis on, on uh, some projects. I'd, I'd love to hear from you, Marquis, later on how, how that goes. Yeah. Um, Suzanne says, sounds like you must feel pretty confident about, about what you'll produce to talk about it before you have the final result. That's kind of like making a promise. Yeah, absolutely, Suzanne. You do need to have uh, the confidence in your art to know that uh, the people are going to be happy with the final result. But the interesting thing is that by showing people the work in progress, you're sort of filtering out the people who wouldn't be interested anyway. Um, and, and, you're, and you'll also be bringing in the people who would be interested. right? Um, you don't have to be a master painter to make a living selling art. Uh, there, there's this great interview that I did with Gwen uh, where she talked about how art doesn't have to be better than mediocre to sell. And every time I say that, every artist in the room winces. Uh, <laughs> but it's, it, is, it is absolutely the truth that you only have to be, you know, at a, there's sort of a minimum technical level that you need to be at. But then after that, there's a lot of artists that are at that level. Um, Did I mute myself? I must, have, I must have accidentally muted myself. Can you yeah. all hear me? Yeah. Now okay. I can. Perfect, perfect. Um, I was just saying hi to Sosha and to uh, Tarana. Um, glad you all are here. Uh, thanks for, uh, thanks for uh, joining us. So going back to the idea of, you know, how do we, how do we work on... Uh, so Donna Spears says, is there a chat system that I cannot find, or is it just the comments section? Uh, it's mostly the comment section, Donna, but there is also the real-time commenting on the YouTube page if you want to go there. So before I go on, does anybody have questions or questions or thoughts? Any of you that are here live? Well, I could. I don't know. Do you know about Carol Marine, Corey? Do you know who she is? Uh, I don't. Well, she does. She's a painter, and she. Mm -hmm. I think she's got the whole online thing down. She. Mm -hmm. She does. She has videos. So on. You know, so I get her. She does a painting a day, which. Oh, uh -huh. So she does a six. Six inch by six inch still life a day, mm -hmm. and then immediately puts it up for auction on eBay, and she has videos that are, are just her doing quick paintings. And, uh, and then she's got this huge number of followers who take, then take her workshops and learn how to do what she does, those small paintings. And I, I just think she's amazing. I'd like to, you know, I, I don't do exactly the same thing, but I think she's got it figured out. So yeah. anyway. So there's, a, there's another artist in here, and I think it's in this presentation. Uh, named Jolie Gillibo. It sounds like she's doing a very similar thing. I'm going to switch back to the, the presentation and show you what I'm talking about. Um, switch back here. So, um, oh, so, so the, in, the, in the course, we sort of break down what, how to do all this, right? Like, you know, what to, how to light your art and the right cameras to use and uh, sort of the basics of taking pictures of your art to share them online. Um, and, and we break down sort of how Gwen and some other artists uh, do these videos, uh, you know, make sure that you do things like capture your emotions, 
whether it's sit and sit in front of a camera and, and just talk about your art or journal about it or do a collage journal, whatever, whatever it is. Um, I'm going to skip ahead to the bit about Julie. Oh, it's not in this part. Well, that's fine. Um, so basically, there's this artist named Jolie Gillibo who does daily paintings. Um, she's based here in Portland as well. And Jolie uh, will essentially, um, she creates a painting a day, and then it's you know, a relatively small piece. And then she'll take pictures of it and send it out to her mailing list with uh, a little story about that art and where it came from, right? Um, and that's it's pretty it's it's pretty much that simple. Um, you know, you don't have to make it more more difficult than that. And she got you know she got better at it over time. She's been doing it for four years, but uh, that's that's how she has created her follow. Mm. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So let's see, Tarana. How you doing? Can we can we hear you? Do you have a microphone on? Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Awesome. I, I can just barely hear you. Okay, so, great. Um, so, Tarana, what part of the country are you from? Uh, I'm from Seattle. From Seattle, and uh, what kind of art do you make? Oh, uh, right now I'm making a uh, animated web comic. Oh, cool. That's awesome. Uh, and and that sounds like a lot of work. Yeah. An animated webcomic animation is a is a very intense process. Yeah. yeah. How long have you been working on it? Uh. Well, I've been really in production for a couple of months. Mhm. Mm and how long do you anticipate it taking you? Uh, for the whole story, maybe seven years. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds that sounds about right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so I need uh, a way to sort of support that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so d is any of this bringing up ideas for you? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Like what? Uh, well, there are some uh, comics artists who will do uh, live streams. Mm -hmm. So they'll uh, work on their comic and invite people to join them. Mm -hmm. So they can watch while the comic is being made. And sort of get a sneak peek of what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. So are you are you going to be doing something like that? Yeah, I think so. That's awesome. And uh, let's see. I'm just looking at some of the comment the comments from the people that are watching online. And Melanie says Carol also uses daily paintworks, where a lot of artists sell for less. Um, so Melanie, yeah, absolutely. If you're gonna if you're gonna do daily paintings, uh, obviously you're gonna sell for less. Um, you're doing smaller pieces. You're doing, uh, you know, you you're doing higher volume, uh, and and you, there's not as much thought. You know, you're not putting tons of thought into every little detail when you're doing daily paintings, but um, you make up for the lower price by selling more paintings. So it's just a different way of operating, right? A lot of artists want to do want to create large pieces and sell them for ten, twenty, thirty thousand dollars or more. Um, that's tough to do unless you are really well known. Um, so selling more art at a lower price is just a different way of approaching the market. Shannon says. She can't hear other people. That was a few minutes, a couple minutes ago. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so Shannon uh, Toronto was saying that she's working on a web comic. Um, oh, and, nice. Yeah, and it's a it's a long long process to create because it's an animated web comic, and mm -hmm. an animation takes a long long time. You can spend hours on a single second, so. Uh, it's a lot of work. So how do you create and maintain an audience while you're waiting for that to happen, right? Um, I think, uh, Tarana, there's a, a cool company called Giant in the Playground. Are you familiar with them? Uh, not really. Yeah. Uh, so Giant in the Playground, uh, it's giantitp.com. Uh, Giant in the Playground, they have this super nerdy comic uh, about Dungeons and Dragons, 
and uh, it is. I've been reading. I think I've been reading it for like eight years. Uh, that comic, and they literally they literally just like release comics like chunks at a time, and then at the end of a year or at the end of a storyline or of of a story arc, they put out a book. And uh, I can imagine that you could probably do something similar. Um, you know, it's a little tougher with animation, but you can probably release stills. You can probably release, uh, uh, you know, prints from the from the animation. Uh, you can probably do contests to have people get themselves inserted in the story along the way. Uh, make it a collaborative process with your audience. And I think you'll find uh, a lot of success there. Great. Shannon, Shannon, why don't you go ahead and say this stuff that you're typing in the chat? Yeah. Okay. I didn't want to interrupt you. Well, I was just going to say my son is ten, and since he was seven or so, he's been way into graphic novels. I mean, I don't, I, I don't know if your book is it, what age it's geared towards, but he still would rather look at a graphic novel and. And teachers have told me, and my husband, by the way, is a comic book artist too. So teachers have told me if you could have, if they could have more stuff, anything geared at kids that like seven to ten, especially my son is a big reader, but some of them who struggle with reading, that teachers are always looking for something to get a kid who doesn't want to read to read. So anyway, that's just a thought. I'm not a graphic novel person, so. I can't do it, but anyway, I'll no, look for your stuff. Thank you, Toronto. What's your What's your Do you have a website yet? Uh, yeah, I do. What is it? Uh, noin dot com. Noin. N w a i n. N w a i n dot com. All right. Is that right? Okay. -A -I -N. All right. So uh, if you're if you're here, check out. Check out Tarana's website. Okay. Hey, Sherilyn, you're back. So, what I'm really trying to get across here, and the, the whole reason that I want even wanted to do this hangout at all, was just to have a casual way of talking with people about um, how you can get out of your own comfort zone and use the web to invite people into the process with you and make it a collaborative process. Um, Sean over in the comments says you could stream yourself working and, ta and talking on a piece. Totally. You can be the Bob Ross of the internet. You can, uh, <laughs> you know, Bob Ross is over, you guys remember Bob Ross. He's painting clouds and painting trees and talking to the camera while he's doing it. Um, everybody on the earth can do that now, right? You just set up a camera, set up your laptop in front in, in your studio and go to town and talk your way through it. You can do it on Google Hangouts like this, or you can do it on Livestream or Ustream. Uh, there's tons of resources for being able to do stuff like that. Yeah, that's a, a great idea, Sean. So one of the... You know, another thing... Yeah, go ahead. All I was going to say, Corey, is I, I've been playing around with Sketchbook Pro lately on my mm -hmm. iPad, mm -hmm. and I just realized in the newest version there's a way that you can capture as you're drawing on it. Mm -hmm. So that, I, I thought that would be a fun thing to, for somebody to look at later, you know, would be to watch as I drew on, on the iPad. Yeah, absolutely. I think even yeah. just the, something as simple as setting up a webcam, like you don't even have to talk through it. You could just set up your uh, webcam, uh, stick it over, you know, put, if you have your easel, maybe your easel uh, at an angle here and you stick up your webcam there and just record yourself sketching or working out, you know, the details on your piece and then you can go back and, uh, you know, create a, a, uh, a high-speed version of that video. What's the word I'm looking for? Uh, where the video huh. goes really fast. <laughs> uh, you know, you just create a, 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 ver a version of it like that, and I, I find that interesting. Um, there's a blacksmith named Rory May who does that. He, uh, you know, he, was, he, has a, he creates decorative uh, metal pieces, um, and so he will create a piece and then 
had just set up a video in his in his uh, blacksmithy, whatever it's called. I don't. Know, what do you call it? <laughs> what do you call it? And uh, and then you can just watch him in in uh, in in high speed, uh, heating up the metal and bending it and shaping it and cooling it down. Um, I personally, I find that super interesting. Um, so there's all kinds of ways to do that um, if you're willing to put yourself out there a little bit. Yeah. So Sosha is, is Sosha or Sasha? Sasha. Sasha. Um, so Sasha says, if most people are doing the same thing, how do individual artists stand out? That's a great question. Um, most artists are not doing the same thing. Um, so first of all, I'll say right now, very, very few artists are doing what we're talking about, right? Um, I mean, we literally, like, we can name them. If I can name them off the top of my head, then that means that there's a tremendous opportunity for artists to get out there and do this kind of stuff. Um, second of all, there are tons of musicians who go out and play live shows, yet tons of people still go to live shows, right? Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's sort of the same idea. Just because an artist is putting themselves out there and showing people what they're doing in process, not everybody's going to care. Not everybody's going to be into, you know, decorative metal smithing. And so, you know, you, you're going to find that the trick is to find your target audience and, and show them what you're doing and uh, sort of ignore everybody else. Um, and every artist's work is going to appeal to a different group. That's why we, we talk about how, you know, an artist doesn't have to be better than mediocre to sell because the, the, the point is not the best artists win. The point is that the, if an artist can find their ideal client, then they're going to do. Then they're going to do well. So in the comment section, Kat says, um, "We've been on the circuit for a year and a half. Uh, she's on the business side, and her husband Lee is the painter. And it has amazed me that buyers, passersby, have no idea how much goes into festivals. Uh, we were one of the six slashed at the Atlanta Art Festival last month. Oh wow. Okay." Um, since it went through the back of a $1,200 painting as well, we used, to we used it to educate the public. Once they saw the slice in the painting and heard the story, they seemed to appreciate the art and what goes into putting up a tent to a beautiful, uh, on a beautiful weekend. Yeah, that's great. That's great, Kat. Um, I'm glad you did that. And that can be time-lapse. Thank you, Melanie. That's the <laughs> time-lapse <laughs> video. That's the term I was looking for. Um, okay. And... Uh, yeah, Gemma, I'm glad you're finding this helpful. Um, and then Sean says, uh, create record. Oh, yeah, like if you're doing this when you're creating documentation, uh, not only does it help you market yourself and help you connect with people, but you're creating records of your progress. And that is actually really awesome, right? Because if you do this for a couple of years, you can look back and say, oh, my gosh, you know, look at where I was a year ago or two years ago or ten years ago. And that gives you an idea of how much you've grown as an artist. And uh, you know, over time, over the next few years, as more and more artists do stuff like this, it also builds credibility. Um, if you have an online paper trail, so to speak, an online identity that is uh, ubiquitous, that can be found on YouTube and eBay and Etsy and Facebook and Twitter and everywhere else, uh, because you've created all this content and shared it, that makes it you more accessible, more more easy to find, and that sort of ubiquity can raise your value as an artist. If if I suddenly if I start seeing an artist everywhere, then something in my brain is going to say, "Why is this artist everywhere? What am I missing? What do I not know about this artist? And should I be considering, you know, adding that artist to my collection?" Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. This is fun. I, <laughs> I'm glad. I'm, I'm personally glad we're doing this. I'm glad that other people are getting, uh, getting stuff out of it too. So, um, if you know, for those of you who are into this and this and this is making sense to you, uh, you know, I'd love to to work with you. Um, you know, this is not meant to be like a, a big pitch video. Just if you are interested in uh, doing something like this. 
um, I am doing the next live session of my content marketing course starting next week. Uh, you, the, the videos, the, download, the self-study courses are always available, um, but I am going to be doing a live session of this uh, starting next week We'll be doing uh, sort of it, it's sort of a similar format to this, where everybody who's in the course gets together and uh, talks about how to do these kind of things, um, but in a more structured way. Um, the we you know we have four different hour-long video courses, and uh, each course talks about you know how to document your process, how to uh, create marketing content out of it, how to create blog posts, how to create social media content. Um, we go through all of that. And then uh, we go through, uh, you know, how to automate some of this distribution stuff, how to automate your email marketing, automate your social media, um, how to use all of those things to get people talking and driving them back to your website where you can then make sales. Um, each, you know, so, so for four videos, we cover all of that. And then in between each course, we do a live session like this where people can ask questions and bounce ideas off of each other and, sh and share with each other what they've done and help each other figure out how to overcome some of these obstacles. Um, we're doing two of those sessions a week, one in the afternoon, one in the morning. Um, so if you are interested in, in joining us for that, um, you can join us at theabundantartist.com slash content. Uh, and then you, that, that's the sign up page for the course if you want to go there and find out a little, a little bit more about it. Again, that's theabundantartist.com slash content. Um, so let's see, there was another question. Sasha says, what type of paintings would you recommend for Christmas, the upcoming holiday? Uh, Christmas paintings. <laughs> uh, hopefully that answers that question. Um, uh, I'm not a big fan of artists... Uh, I'm not a big fan of artists creating art just for a specific holiday. If it fits in with who you are as an artist and your vision and your voice, um, great. But it doesn't have to be Christmas themed in order for it to sell during Christmas. Um, people buy gifts for each other during Christmas that aren't Christmas related. Um, you know, if you've got a beautiful piece of art that would fit in somebody's home, uh, then you know you can promote that as a Christmas gift it doesn't necessarily have to be a Christmas painting. That's my opinion anyway, for what it's worth. I just asked that because um, let's see. Barb in the comments says, I like the ideas. Thanks, Barb. Glad you're here. Um, Angela Treat Lion. Hey hey Angela. Um, so how do you find collector collectors relevant to your work? For instance, I do mid-size sculpture for home and office. Other than SEO and content, what else can I do to attract the people who'd buy them? Um, Angela, that's what we talk about in the course. Uh, but it, content is a very broad term. Um, so the creation of the content is just the first step. right? If you, if you create a video of, your, of you doing it, or you create a, a time-lapse video of you creating a painting, that's the first step. Then you have to go market it. So uh, there's research tools that you can use to find people who are interested in those kinds of things. Uh, you want to find websites, magazines, and blogs that are interested in the subject matter of your art so that people, you know, so if you, for example, uh, Angela, I know that at one point you were creating art about New Orleans. Um, I imagine that there are tons of websites that feature New Orleans artists, that feature, uh, you know, the culture of New Orleans, that talk about you know all sorts of things New Orleans. Um, I would get in touch with the people who run those websites and share some of your videos and uh, process stuff with those people over time. And uh, as you develop relationships with them, uh, I would imagine that they're going to come back and, uh, and 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 be more interested in what you do. Um, you know, like, as I mentioned, we do go into um, into all of that in more detail in the course. Uh, if you want to, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. Um, Daniel says, uh, oh, okay, that's just a, I, I didn't really understand what was going on in that comment. Okay. Um, Sean says, the best artist doesn't win, the most popular artist wins. 
Absolutely true. Um, <laughs> uh, unfortunately, but absolutely true. Uh, it's just sort of the way that commerce works. You know, uh, you get the, the Thomas Kincaid effect. Um, you know, we, maybe we don't all want to be Thomas Kincaid, but we'd all like to have his money, at least mm -hmm. before he went bankrupt. But that's a separate issue. So uh, we're coming up close on an hour. Um, I, I would love to uh, answer any questions anybody has um, just in the next few minutes. Sasha, people are like, Sasha's trying to talk. Sasha, what are you trying to say? Do you have your mic mute? Do you have yourself muted, Sasha? I can't hear you at all. Still can't hear you. Something about it's OK. Go ahead and type it in the chat. OK, well, apparently she figured it out. So no worries. All right. Well, thanks so much, everybody. Um, you know, unless anybody else has burning questions or thoughts, uh, we'll go ahead and wrap it up here. All right. Thanks, everybody. Uh, we're we're going to do this again tomorrow morning at 10 AM Pacific. Uh, looking forward to seeing uh, some or all of you there. And uh, this recording will get posted to the YouTube channel uh, relatively soon. Thanks, everybody.